said, all right. So I took another man with me and the two of us went up there and he was alone that night at the house and we sat down with him and I'm telling you, he was right. He was ready to repent and receive Christ. Brother, I'm telling you, I love it when that happens. When you have somebody whose heart is open and ready to get right with God, we were having exciting meetings. I mean, all through the community, people heard about it. People were coming from everywhere. And brother, we led that man to the Lord. He came to our church uh, even that evening and uh, came back the next night. And uh, he said to me, you said, preacher, he said, the thing I'm worried about now is my wife, I'm saved, but she isn't. And he had married an Oriental girl. He was in the Navy, married an Oriental girl, brought her back here to the United States. And he said, I, I'm concerned about my wife. I said, well, when's a good time for us to come over and talk with her? He said, well, uh, I'll have to ask her because her hours of work, you know, they change, they fluctuate. And said, uh, then I, I, I'll get right back with you. Well, he got right back with us. We showed up at his house sometime around like 7 o'clock in the evening um, to talk with his wife. And we went into the kitchen area, actually the dinette area, and I took my open Bible and laid it in front of her. The, uh, the other guy that came with me sitting here and the young man, her husband, had just got saved, sat on the other side. And I sat there and was running through the Bible and the Scripture with the Romans Road. And that lady, and I could tell she was reluctant. It was new to her. It was strange to her. But she kept, I said, now, and before I go to one point to the next point, I make sure you understand that point. No need going to the next point if you don't understand the first point. Right. Do you fully understand it? Can I explain it better, maybe? And so we were going through the Romans Road and doing all that. All of a sudden, the telephone rang. Yeah. Yeah. The telephone rang, and he got up and went and answered it. Now, you're down here at 7, 7.15, 7 7.30 in the evening hour. He answers the phone. And he comes back in at the door with the phone up against his chest and he said, it's your mother from the Philippines. <laughs> All right. mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. He didn't call her back. She jumped out of that seat and ran in there to talk to mom. How about that? Me and that preacher and her husband sat there and we prayed and we talked and we witnessed and I knew right then and there. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. Brother, that has happened time yes, and time yeah. and time again yeah. in witnessing the people. Yeah. You say, what is that preacher? I'll tell you what it is. Others hindering others from being saved. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now listen, her mother did, probably didn't know what we were doing, but boy, the devil did. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 The devil knew what was going on there. Yeah. Yeah, amen. I mean, she hadn't spoken to her mother in six months, amen. Yeah. But on that night that we're dealing with her soul, her mother calls her. Uh -huh. And you know who? what happened? Brother, I'm telling you, I know her mother didn't know that. But brother, I bet you for anything in the world, the God of this world, the devil, put it in the mind of mama, call your daughter over there in the United States. Yeah. Yep. We went back two or three other times. And you know what? She wouldn't even talk to us. Yep. They ended up getting a divorce. Yep. They ended up getting a divorce, the two of them. I'm telling you, there's a danger of being hindered by others. Now listen, let me tell you something. If you are here tonight and you're not a Christian, you're not saved, you've never experienced uh, the new birth, I want to plead with you tonight, don't put it off any longer. Yeah. Right. There's a danger of putting off yeah. salvation. Yeah. Let me say it's number three, the danger of a hasty or sudden death. I won't spend a whole lot of time on this. I'll tell a story and get out of the way. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, verse 1, Boast not thyself tomorrow, yeah. for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Right, right. Nobody here knows. Listen, I know what you're doing. I've been around you all long enough to understand you. You, you think you got plans tomorrow? You got an idea of what you're going to be doing tomorrow? Uh, you got ideas that you, you got to go do your shopping? Some of you fellas uh, may be thinking you got to do uh, uh, mow the grass and and uh, maybe you got an idea or a concept uh, that uh, that you're going to go out to the lake or or ride your Harley or or or, or whatever. I, I have to say this. I had a man in our church. He said, "Preacher, is it is it a fact that we're riding back on white horses when Jesus comes back uh, uh, there uh, to take over the earth and the world?" I said, "Yes, sir. That's exactly what he said." 
He said, I'm going to ask him if I can ride a Harley, amen. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be a bad idea, amen. <laughs> but we've heard, we've heard, we've, we've talked to people, we've witnessed to people, and brother, here's the situation. They've heard the Word of God. They're not interested in our religion. Yeah, yeah. They're not interested in God. They, 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 they're just out there and they're just trying to have fun and have enjoyment in this life. You know what America pursues tonight? Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Right, That's yeah. what America is pursuing here tonight. Yeah. 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 The danger of a hasty or sudden death. Years ago I was in a meeting where Dr. Curtis Hudson was doing the preaching. He told this story. He talked about a story or a meeting he was in where uh, he led this man and woman and a beautiful little girl to the Lord Jesus in one of his meetings. And he said they just, I mean, they were the uh, ideal couple uh, with an ideal child and said that they just, uh, they just looked good. They, they were a good-looking couple and a good-looking family. And he said, I, I led that man. He was a businessman. He was a, well, not, maybe not a businessman, but uh, he, he was involved in, in you know technology and success and this and that and he was a very successful uh, person. Let me put it that way. And uh, kind of people you like to attract to your church, Amen. Amen. We like everybody, but boy, sometimes it's good to get folks in here to know something a little smart. Amen. Oh boy, I'm in trouble now, and I'm in deep. I'm in deep doo doo. Amen. Better get out of here real quick. But anyway, anyway, he led this man and this woman. And the little girl to Jesus Christ. Well, that man, that man had a burden. He had a burden for his brother who was about 27 years old. He lived in Florida at the time. And uh, this meeting all took place up there in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, this, this fellow got a burden for his brother in Florida. And he told uh, Dr. Hudson, he said, Dr. Hudson, I want you to pray for my brother. He said, uh, I've got such a burden that he'll come to know the Lord like we know the Lord, how the Lord came into our lives and the Lord would come into His life. And I'm going down there to visit Him and, and witness to Him. I'm taking a full week from work uh, to go down there just to visit with my brother. And sure enough, He did. And He went down there to, to try His best to lead His brother to Jesus Christ. But every time His brother, uh, every time He talked to His brother, His brother laughed at Him. And one of the things that His brother continually told Him, He would say, I'm young, I have plenty of time, leave me alone, I'm just in my 20s. And he said, I didn't make no headway with him. Well, a man came back after a week being down there with his brother. He came back and talked to Dr. Hudson and said, keep praying. Dr. Hudson said, I didn't get anywhere with him. He said, Dr. Hudson, but every time I talked to him, if he didn't tell me this once, he told it to me a dozen times. He said, I'm young, I'm just in my 20s, I'm just not interested. I, I'm not I'm not wanting what you got. I'm not interested in being a Christian. I have plenty of time. Well, after that event happened, about a week or two after that, brother went down there to visit him. This 20-year-old uh, something picked up a hitchhiker. Picked him up down there in Florida, and the guy that he picked up had a revolver on him and had him go down a, a dirt road right off the main highway, about six, seven miles out there, an old dirt road out there. And he put six bullets in that, in that boy's body, killed him. And then took his wallet, and took his car, and drove away. They didn't know what had happened to this 20-year-old guy. Weeks went by, nobody found him, knew anything about him. People were inquiring, what happened? What happened to this young man? And the brother in the latter Georgia was very concerned. In fact, the entire family was concerned about him. Until finally, some fellow that, that uh, would go out that road... Uh, to a little lake where he did fishing, noticed that there was a body on the side of the road. And he stopped and called the police. And they came down, and it was his brother. A little 27-year-old guy that says, I've got plenty of time. I'm only in my 20s, and yeah. I'm still young. Well, they brought his body back up there to Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, they asked Dr. Curtis Hudson. I was there in the meeting when he was telling this story. And they asked Dr. Curtis Hudson to... Uh, to do the uh, funeral, and uh, Dr. Hudson said, the first time I walked up to the casket and I looked into that box, I seen that face of that boy, he said, I could swear, I could see on that boy's face the attitude, I'm young, I had plenty of time, 
I'm just in my 20s. Yeah. Sorry. He ain't in his 20s no more. Yeah. He's in hell. Right. Yeah. 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 About that. Yeah. The salvation thing is important. Right. Yeah. 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 Christ didn't come here and die on the cross just for you to have a good time in life. That's right. He went to the cross to die for your sins yeah. so you wouldn't have to yeah. die and go to hell. Amen. Yeah. 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 That's why he died on the cross to save you from hell. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Unfortunately for that young man, he died lost without Christ. God's not going to wait on you either. Are you right. listening? Yeah. Right. I tell you what, I, I'll be honest with you. Back in the 70s when I got saved, brother, the first reason I got saved, well, there's actually about two or three things. First of all, Bible prophecy, Jesus had become any moment. Yeah. That kind of alarmed me. My grandparents told me about that. I mean, I was just a young boy, teenager. And they talked about, well, Lord, be coming. Now, I know, I'm, I'm like you. I'm sorry he hadn't come yet, back yet. But he's coming. Yeah, he I believe me, he's coming. Yeah, yeah. You know how I know he's coming? He said so. Uh, yeah, right. He told us to be ready because we don't know when he's coming. But they used to tell me that when I got when I got to be 25 years old, I, I was reading the book by Hal Lindsey. I know you all, I know he wasn't a Bible believer like we were, but brother, that book scared the snot out of me. The late great planet Earth. I thought, boy, I'm lost and I'm in sin, and if, if Jesus comes back, I'll be in the trib and I'll have to go through and suffer and probably go to hell after that. So that's one thing that got a hold of my heart. But the biggest thing that got a hold of my heart was sitting under preaching, thinking, brother. I go to bed at night thinking if I don't wake up in the morning, I'll be in hell. Right yeah. I'd wrestle around that bed under conviction, knowing I need to get right with God, knowing I needed to get saved, knowing that the Lord was dealing with my heart. And just like uh, the preacher said the other night, I'd go out and drink with my buddies and, and get involved in the garbage that I was involved in at that time. And I couldn't enjoy it no more. Yeah. I'd sit there and nurse a beer. And I'd normally guzzle three or four of them. I'd sit there and nurse that beer and sit in that bar room and listen to the singing and the music and drink and say, what in the world am I doing here? Right. This is nothing. Right. What a waste of time. Yeah, sit there and say, what a waste of time. Yeah. I didn't realize it, but I was under conviction. Yeah. yeah. Holy Ghost was convinced of me I need to get right with God. Right. Yeah. I was talking about the danger of putting off salvation. The first danger we talked about is a hardened heart. The second is being hindered by others. The third is the danger of a hasty death. Let me give you number four, the danger of a horrifying horrifying hell. Look at Luke 16, if you would. Luke 16. This story is very familiar with everyone here tonight. I understand that. But look at Luke 16. Look at verse 19, if you would, please, for time's sake. Luke 16, verse 19, please. The Bible said there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Sounds like a typical American to me. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a very, it just sounds like what a normal American has. Verse 20. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores, desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. It came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. Now here's the problem. He wasn't ready to die. Yeah. Who is? Who's ready to die? Christians. Truth of the matter, nobody really is. Yeah. Nobody wants to die, saved or lost. Right. But we're going to. Yeah. And you're going to. Most of yeah. you are going to face death. If the rapture doesn't happen. Yeah. Right. Man. You're going to die. Where are you going to be the day you die? What's going to happen right before you die? What are the events of your life going to look like just a few minutes before you take your last breath here on this earth and your first breath in hell? Yeah. yeah. It's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Oh, yes. I don't think it's made. I know he wasn't prepared to die, first of all, because he wasn't saved. Because the preacher said moments ago. Look at verse 23. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And said, Lazarus, he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. How shall we escape? We neglect so great salvation. 
Yeah. How are you going to escape? You know, there's uh, there's no answer. You're not going to escape. Amen. That's a question that has no real answer. Amen. Nobody's going to escape hell that didn't get saved. Amen. You got to be saved to escape hell. Amen. Yeah. How shall you escape if you neglect so great salvation? I believe if we could call this man up from out of hell tonight and bring him here before all of us here this evening somehow resurrect his soul out of hell and bring his body back together and stand him up here and interview him for a little bit. I believe we could ask him a question and say, Sir, did you ever conceive you would be in hell? You know what I think he would say? No, I didn't. I thought I had plenty of time. I didn't dream that I would die the day I died. Right. I, I had no clue that that was what's going to happen. Let me tell you all something. Back there on 9-11, there were people that went to work in those buildings in New York City that had been going to that place and working there for days, weeks, and years and going through the typical Tuesday morning traffic. They get to work like they had done the past Tuesday and the Tuesday before that and the Tuesday before that and none of them expected a plane to enter into their building right. and kill 2,800 people. Yeah. It happened suddenly yeah. right. without warning. Yeah. Amen. Brother, I'm telling you something. Jesus died to keep you out of a horrifying hell. You put all salvation, you may wait too late. You know, brother, preacher, I believe with all my heart right now that in hell right now, people that are burning in hell, I believe there's millions and millions and millions that heard the gospel, heard that they could be saved, yeah. and for whatever reason, they ignored it or avoided the opportunity and neglected to get saved. Yeah. And now they're sitting in hell saying, boy, I didn't expect to die. Right. I really didn't expect I, that Life went by too quickly. It was way too brief. I didn't, I didn't expect to be here. I really, really, seriously, I thought I'd give my heart to God before I got here. Yeah. But they didn't. Right, right. It could be somebody here in this tent be next. Let me tell you something. You got a couple of funeral homes up here in Hillsboro. They get a shipment of caskets coming in weekly or monthly or however they get them. There may be a casket sitting up there in their room waiting on you. Yep. Right. Has your casket arrived in town yet? Yeah. Well, oh, preacher, that's just all that preacher talk. That casket's up there for somebody. Right. Somebody's going to be placed in that casket. Somebody's going to be hauled off to the cemetery. And somebody's going to be plotted in the ground. But long before that ever happens, their soul will be burning in hell. Right. right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Right. amen. 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 Right. You want to amen me? I amen myself. Amen, amen preacher. Amen. We've lost the seriousness of this thing. That's why we don't win souls. Right, right. We don't believe people are dying going to hell anymore. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. We're living a comfortable life. We just assume everybody wants to be comfortable. You're going to die and go to hell and it won't be comfortable. Right. Amen. Amen. Let me give you my final point. I was a good guy until then. I'm going to be a real mean guy now. Amen. Amen. Not only the danger of hindering of others, hasty suddenness of death, a horrifying hell. But how about the danger of a haunted memory? Look here in Luke 16. You're still there with me. Look at verse 25. And Abraham said, Son, remember. Hold it. He's talking to the rich man in hell. Yeah. He tells him, remember. What is he asking him to remember? Here it is. Verse 25. Remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. You know something? He knew that. Yeah. You see, when you're in hell, you don't lose your faculties. Right. You don't lose your memory. You, you. I mean, here he is talking. He has eyes. Lift up his eyes in hell. He's got a tongue that is scorched. He wants it. He wants it cooled off. And by the way, I've never had a drop of water ever cool me down when I was thirsty. Amen. Yeah. This man was so thirsty that he was willing to take one drop. Now catch this. He was willing to, to take one drop off of the hand of a homeless person who probably hadn't had a bath in months, 
who probably was not sanitary. He was willing for a man who lived out in behind the, uh, the alleys of your back streets and reaches into garbage cans to feed himself. He said, put your finger in that water and bring it to me and let me have a drop of it off your feet. I want to ask you something. Yeah. If I brought the rock, oh, I, 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 I hate saying this. I don't want to. I don't want. If I brought the raunchiest, dirtiest, filthiest, filthiest bum in this town, or in Columbus, Ohio, and 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 you were thirsty, and he took his finger and put it in water, would you lick his finger? Would you lick his finger? No, you wouldn't do that. No matter how thirsty you were, this man in hell would. Yeah. It's made in hell, would. Send Lazarus. Yeah. Send the guy that's walking the streets. Let him dip his finger in water. I'm not done. Look at verse. Look at verse 27. Then he said, "I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house." Now notice his concern. For I have five brethren that they may testify, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Verse 29, Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets here then. Yeah. Look up here. Yeah. They have Moses yeah. and the prophets. Right. Yes. Yeah. Let your lost family hear them. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. This man was aware of his surroundings. He was conscious of his difficulty. He understood the terrible torment he was in. And his biggest concern was for his family that was lost. Yeah. You know what they're worried about in hell tonight? Yeah. Listen, old sinner. You probably got aunts, uncles, great grandfathers, great grandmothers, maybe grandfathers, grandmothers, maybe a parent. Or say they're in heaven. So you may have some that were lost. You know what they're doing in hell tonight? They're praying for you, lost soul. Yeah. People in hell praying for you not to come to this awful place of right. yeah, right. I believe every sinner in hell is haunted by their memory. Yeah. They remember every time God gave them a chance to be saved, but you know what they did? They put it off. They put it off and they put it off. I'm going to close with this and I'm done. You're liable to put it off. Too late. Right. You're here tonight and the Spirit of God is dealing with your conscience, your soul, your heart. And He's saying to you, boy, you better listen to that preacher. You better get right with God. Brother, when you heard the singing here moments ago by this wonderful family and that music was penetrating your mind and your heart and you were listening and it might have been telling you, you know tonight's the night you need to get right with God tonight's the night you need to get saved I can't explain exactly how the Holy Ghost in that small still voice begins to work within us but brother there's something happening in our mind and our heart that's telling this is your opportunity this is your chance this is your time don't waste it come to Jesus yeah. Amen. 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 the danger of putting off Salvation. Stand your feet, heads are bowed, and eyes are closed. Heads are bowed. <laughs>